Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. The government of St. Lucia is one step closer to delivering a refurbished Huonara International Airport. A port community single window has been opened to improve the ease of doing business in St. Lucia. A nationwide sensitization is on against measles. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Wapo Acreol. The government of St. Lucia is one step closer to delivering a refurbished Huonara International Airport, HIA. Thursday, the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, announced Seabri Heary Inc. as the architect for the HIA redevelopment project. Janelle Norville reports. Seabri Heary is a leading full-service architecture, interior design, engineering program, and construction management firm. Its Miami office is leading the efforts as it relates to the Hiranora International Airport redevelopment project. The company's relationship with SLASPA spans over a decade, having been selected as the architectural firm for both of the previous planning and design stages of the project. SLASPA indicated its understanding of the industry, the demands of the aviation sector, and the criteria that St. Lucia aspires to meet enabled a relatively smooth selection process for the authority in recommitting to the company. Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Honorable Stevenson King, provided a breakdown of the project. The first design entailed the construction of a new terminal north of the existing terminal, which means to the back of the, the existing terminal where the car park is. Following which, following which, the intention was to demolish the existing terminal and to provide sufficient, sufficient room that would then allow us to qualify for what we call the, the recess away from the mid the mid, um, the middle, the midline of the airport runway. However, after reconsidering what we we're talking about, we felt and we proposed to the designers the need to look at the possibility of building a new terminal obliquely to the back of the existing terminal, which is probably in a north northwest angle, north northwest angle that would allow us to keep the existing terminal, the old terminal, that can be used for an FOB. Along with the authority, Seabree Heary has ensured through the revised and modified plans for the new airport that the finished product will meet the demands of the aviation industry and rival neighboring Caribbean islands as one of the best airports in the region. As a leader with extensive experience in providing architectural designs and program management for similar aviation projects, their work includes the Hartfield Jackson International Airport and Miami International Airport North Terminal Development, to name a few. Acting General Manager of Slatsba, Darren Snack, expressed his delight in the project progressing into its final design and approval stages and anticipation for its commencement. Minister King also explained that the new design is set to save Slasper and by extension the government of St. Lucia a great deal on maintenance costs. The runway, Mr. Speaker, which is 9,000 feet, the intention is to resurface the runway and that will come in the second phase where the runway will be resurfaced, the turning bay will be reconstructed and to be realigned in a proper way but to ease some of the pressure which over the years we've had at the turning bay because of the maneuvering of the aircraft at that point, a taxiway will be established so as not to add that pressure on the turning bay. Because what is happening is because of the constraints of the turning bay, as that aircraft gets to the point of turning at the end of the runway to take off, just that turn around and the wheels the pressure on the pavement often deteriorates the pavement and often costs the government or SNASPA quite a bit of money. The airport project, according to the minister, will also comprise of all the required services, a new control tower and an active plan to address the nearby river that, as a result of adverse weather, causes runoff onto the airport.
In ensuring that the blueprint for the project was in accordance with international standards, SLASPA engaged the local, regional and international civil aviation stakeholders. SLASPA's consultation process also involved the Development Control Authority, DCA, and Ministry of Planning. The anticipated unveiling of plans to St. Lucia is scheduled for the coming weeks. From the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Government is seeking to simplify the administrative processes and procedures in reference to goods entering and leaving the country. In 2009, Cabinet gave permission for the establishment of a port community single window to increase St. Lucia's competitiveness in regards to the trading of goods. Glenn Simon has the latest. In a thrust to improve St. Lucia's ease of doing business ranking, the government of St. Lucia has focused on trade facilitation of domestic and commercial goods in and out of the island's ports. Government is seeking to implement what is termed a port community single window to electronically harmonize and standardize information related to the clearing of goods. Trade facilitation officer Suzette Louis Jean explained how this system will significantly improve the ease of doing business in St. Lucia. What it's going to do, it's going to allow, it's, it's going to make trading easier and if we if we would like to be competitive on the global the market we really have to make trading within our borders a lot easier for investors so for example we have customs with the asicutor system slasper has its own what um and there are a lot of others you have the truckers the the shippers so what we're hoping to do is to get all these agencies together under a single umbrella or a single window as we'll call it um, so when, say, uh, when, when a trader uploads his manifest, he does it once. So there will be no reason to go to, go to um, customs, go back to Slasper, then go to agriculture, all these different agencies. You only upload this thing once and it goes through the system until a decision has been made on your, on your input. She stated that the World Trade Organization, WTO, Trade Facilitation Agreement, makes it mandatory for all its members to establish a single window. Developing countries like St. Lucia stand to benefit from this trade facilitation agreement, of which the single window is a major component. So we must do it so that we become attractive to investors um, and make it easier for all of us, in fact, who are, doing, who are trading within our borders. Sabine Bajazi is the Communications and External Affairs Manager for SEBA in Guadeloupe. Seba is a private company charged with managing the port community single window in Guadeloupe for the past 15 years. She said the port single window facilitates all the logistics and trade facilitation processes in a complete paperless system. First of all, it's not an IT program, it's not an IT project. Uh, IT is part of it. It's really how we're doing business, how we are declaring uh, our goods, how we're doing importation, exportation, uh, transshipment. So, the way of doing the process will actually be optimized through the system. She noted that the value added St. Lucia will receive from implementing such a system far outweighs the initial setup cost. However, the modality for operationalizing and running the port community single window is yet to be decided upon by government. We have to put together a steering committee and then we're going, to gather, we're going to do an analysis and gather all the information that we need. And then a determination will be made as to whether it's, it's how the government, whether a separate company is developed, open to run it, or whether we allow the private sector to run with it. So it's a decision that will be made once we have all the information that is necessary. Jamaica and Guadeloupe have already established the port single window within their territories. The implementation of the Port Community Single Window is considered a priority on the ease of doing business agenda for St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness is taking a proactive approach to control the spread of the measles virus by sensitizing healthcare professionals around the island. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. Healthcare professionals were granted the opportunity to acquire information about the guidelines for the prevention and control of the measles virus for a sensitization workshop held recently. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma george says, although St. Lucia has been free of measles since 1990, it is necessary that healthcare workers are sensitized about surveillance measures as to allow for prompt interventions if cases are identified. 
The immunization for measles started in 1982 and our last documented case of measles in St. Lucia was in the year 1990. So as you could imagine, most of our healthcare workers would not have seen or managed a case of measles. With what is happening in the region and in the wider world, we note that the threat of a measles outbreak is coming quite closer. So we are taking a very proactive step in ensuring that all of our healthcare workers are updated and sensitized so that we can have early detection if we were to get an imported case of measles coming into the island. Dr. Belma George says it is important that children are protected against measles by getting vaccinated. We have noted that in the last five to ten years, um, some parents have chosen not to immunize their, their children. So those children who are not immunized are at risk. The measles is a viral illness, it's an acute illness, and it is one of the most infectious um, agents that you could get. So all we need is for one person with the measles virus to travel um, into St. Lucia or for somebody from St. Lucia who's not been fully immunized to travel into an area with an outbreak. And it would now put persons who have not received their full schedule of vaccines or not immunized would be at risk for, for such a, a disease. The Medical Office of Health is appealing to parents to review their child's health card and ensure it is updated. Through the immunization program, the Department of Health and Wellness will be administering the vaccine for measles free of charge. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. I have my mobile, landline, cable TV and internet service. If I have a problem with any of the services, what should I do? Here's what you should do to resolve the problem. First, get and fill out a complaint form and lodge your complaint with the service provider. If after 30 days there is still no solution, you may contact your National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, NTRC. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC and this station. Welcome back. The Government Information Service is currently positioning itself to better serve the information needs of you, the public. Among those efforts is programming in Creole. We will have the details in a moment, but first we join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hi. I'm Ryan O'Brien once again with news from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. It's just over one week before the National Sports Awards comes off at the Royalton Beach Resort and Spa. A final press briefing is scheduled for Wednesday, February 13th at the conference room of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. It's also a week when judges come together to deliberate. Officials from the Ministry tie up loose ends. Nominees are brought in for briefings, while orators and MCs rehearse for the big night. The National Television Network, as they have done in the past, will be broadcasting the ceremony live and are also making sure the best possible pictures and audio are brought to you. Join us live from the Royalton from 7 p.m. Early preparations are underway to get our school's volleyball team in fine form for competition in this year's Winnet Island School Games. A volleyball festival held at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex Thursday signaled the start of identification of new talent coming out of primary and secondary schools. Coach Dennis Sinclair has observed that with so much interest being shown in the festival, it also augurs well for the competition for places on the national team. Seeing what I see there, I can see how we could put easily, as long as they're willing, to put two teams together for the Winwood Island School Games. I mean, there are people there who play for clubs already, and they're all coming from the secondary school. There are people in Form 3, Form 4, which is very good because it means that they have another two years at the secondary school, plus two years at the, at the morn, so that gives them four years to learn and so. And the whole object of this is to be able to send a, start sending a core of volleyballers to the, to the national pool so it makes it more difficult to make the senior national team. Today it seems like nothing. Anybody goes and they're on the team. But the time will come when you have to come with something to make the senior national team. The ministry is continuing with arrangements for the start of the secondary school's volleyball tournament by month end. 
And as we end, a quick preview of some engagements for our senior officers this weekend. First is the National Football Association Awards Saturday evening at the Marina Haven Hotel. And on Sunday, the Swimming Association will be holding their ceremony at Harbour Club. Officials of the ministry are expected to be present there as well. Next week, the Mass United Secondary Schools Cricket Tournament bowls off. You can follow the action at a venue near you. The island's top young cricketing talent will be on display. That's all from us at the Youth Development and Sports this week. Thanks for being with us. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Wapo Apriyo. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. Today we are proud to begin expanding NTN's programming to include Creole with the NTN Wapo A Creole with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur, Madame, Department de Responsabilité pour Information, Gouvernement, c'est le CISACGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qu'à vous êtes au Nouvelle Acquéole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Célébration, 40e anniversaire de Pédas, c'est le CIS, qu'à courir, puis bonne vitesse. Selon le représentatif, le bureau premier ministre, le CIS, M. Tony Nicholas, célébration qui commençait depuis décembre l'année passée, très actif, et qu'à avoir ses plusieurs activités. Puis l'année, ça là, célébration qui a aussi dans plusieurs communes pays. Nous ni Ralia, nous avons ni toute l'année c'est Ralia qui fait à ce différents districts là. Donc nous pas ni y a quoi Ralia qui suit l'année ça là. Donc ça commune y a ni différents Rali pour l'année ça là. Aussi nous avons ni différents chef service là à la différents communes. Grosile, Viefour, Denry, Miku. Selon M. Nicolas, il y a un grand spectacle. C'est un parade qui a été à l'homme à nous. Nous avons des gens qui veulent participer à la parade. C'est le carnaval ban là, nous avons des Royal Lights. Différents carnaval ban là, différents sporting communes là, nous avons des gens pour venir ensemble, pour faire différentes sections pour la parade. Quand on a dit, all in, nous sommes tous ensemble. Il n'y a pas. N'importe quoi tu veux, nous voulons participer à la toute ces activités à l'année ça là. Une nouvelle célébration est pas dans toujours. À parmi d'autres spectacles pour célébration, c'est un grand concert qui est prévu le 21 février côté diverses activités culturelles, qui en performance pour spectacle tout ça là. Les chanteurs calypso à parmi plusieurs autres artistes qui participent. La Kaye ni yon grand marché, kote le participant, Kaye marché ou yon peya, komase kol de sak pou soufriye vye fò pou vire a kastri. Sa osi Kaye prekou le 21 februye, komase a seke apou midi. Yon grand kompetisyon apami ti le jenes peya, sa se yon lot spektak pou gwe la wene te bodas 2019, e sa se le 15 februye. Pou le speya osi, Kaye jwe yon wol, yon gwo wol kote yon Kaye Chen divers pawad ek lot spektak a divers komin komase a kastwi ou soufriye a pami plize lot gwan komin. Tem e te pa das nan nisa la se anou tout asam an la out a preparasyon pou tan ki ka vidi. Komite a te chen yon konfrans pou le man media pe ya me kodi pase an studio GIS. Debatman pou a fe toris ka plase otan fos pour continuer à développer et renforcer le business secteur touriste à cette ici. Pour ça, il faut pousser plus vite l'aménagement et le développement du secteur bateau touriste. Alors, pour l'année 2019, l'initiative, c'est pour agendouer la communication 
et puis association business bateau en Caribla qui établit en Floride. C'est pour raison qui a pu près 50 participants qui ni l'intérêt du WEC en secteur bateau touriste et en hôtel Big Gardens jeudi pour apprendre une manière pour se faire plus profit en secteur ça là. En parlant de ça, association hôtel et café touriste en cette ci qui officiellement présenté compétition nationale entre les chefs hôtel pour qui en ce groupe là qui a été fait plus meilleure cuisine et préparer boisson. On en est là. Premier vice-président, ancien si directeur association, John Mathrin, déclare qui. Il a invité les participants à plusieurs restaurants et hôtels. Il a ajouté qui, attention, c'est pour, principalement pour aider les hôtels et les restaurants pays à, pour suivre les capacités, pour ça établir le business qu'on n'importe les autres à la terre. La compétition a été pour trois jours, commencé samedi le 9 février à l'école secondaire comprehensive à Castui. Division des affaires courant en ministère des affaires bâtissement, j'ai commencé une démarche pour procurer éducation publique concernant tout ça qui est nécessaire. Les officiers qui ont examiné la connexion des affaires courant en caille commercial et domestique. Loi Kabay pour ni caille commercial et aussi domestique trouver examiné de temps en temps. En fait, il est nécessaire pour trouver examination tous les deux ans pour caille commercial et tous les cycles pour les domestiques, pour les autres, la division de la discussion et puis tout le monde qui est là pour vous faire assurer que vous tout suivez ces lois. Le Parlement a pris des marches pour régler la législation qui a gouverné à faire taxes payées, un effort pour augmenter les quantités de taxes qui payent à supposer amasser et en même temps réduire à souci la quantité qui publique la carte du gouvernement. Premier ministre et ministre pour affaires et finances, Honorable Alain Chasney, déclaré que pour ce sens, la législation neuf là qui a autorisé le chef de l'Inland Revenue, ça c'est le bureau qui a une responsabilité pour affaires taxes payées, et aussi côté qui a été approché le chef de la douane, et bien le directeur de finances pour chercher et découvrir toutes les taxes qui ont été faites le gouvernement. Alors, selon le Premier ministre Chasney, il est plus facile pour le gouvernement amasser les taxes qui publique là qui ont été mais monsieur madame ça c'est pour nous entrer en bout de nouvelle nous pour aujourd'hui a mon ca monsieur au temps pour garder avec mon ca baillon invitation pour venir puis moi encore prime ça chance pour tenir pour surtout en l'autre nouvelle quoi merci à pile primus and that brings us to the end of the ntn nightly join us next time at 7 pm with a repeat at 7 am you can also catch up with us anytime on the saint lucia government facebook page or youtube channel